Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The family of a black man shot dead by a police officer in North Carolina have released a video of the moments before his death. The footage, which was filmed by the man's wife, does not show whether he had a weapon. She's heard saying he wasn't armed. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton has postponed a planned visit to the city of Charlotte so police can get on with their job. A warning that Cordelia Lynch's report includes pictures of the moments before and after the shooting. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. He has no weapon. He has no weapon. Don't shoot him. These are the disturbing Don't moments before Keith Don't Scott is shot by police in North anything. Carolina. His wife filming the fatal encounter as she pleads with officers. He has a TBI. He's not going to do anything to you guys. He just took his medicine. She then urges her husband to comply. Keith, don't let them break the windows. Come on out the car. Keith, don't do it. Keith, get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, 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 don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? He better not be. No, that much he better not be dead. I'm not gonna come near you. I'm gonna record though. I'm not coming near you. I'm gonna record though. He better be alive because I've come. You better be alive. How about that? The video does not show the actual shooting or make clear if he was carrying a gun. These are the police officers that shot my husband, and he better live. He better live because he didn't do nothing to them. The police say he was, but they still refuse to release their own footage. I know he better live. And the reason I want to release it when I can give more supportive information is because if it's, if it's proving our case or proving our case uh, should go in a different direction, the only way to do that is to be able to establish probable cause. And what I can tell you is the video evidence in that case didn't get us to that standard solely. The 43-year-old's death sparked three days of protests. A state of emergency was declared after violent clashes. But last night's demonstration was largely peaceful, a curfew put in place by the city's mayor. He better live. I swear he better live. But public trust and police live. transparency has yet again I'm been brought into guys. sharp focus. Live. Keith Scott's death intensifying an already volatile debate around race and police. No justice, no peace. The protesters chant in unison as they took to the streets for a third night in response to a declared state of emergency and police imposed curfew. More defiance and more anger. As a police helicopter circled overhead, we met a young man on his way to join the protest. It is sending a message to the government. No wow. justice, no justice, no peace. Uh, Y'all can't just keep killing and, and keep doing corrupt shit and don't nobody stand up. The police were out in force too, and as a group of protesters moved to block Highway 77, they were met by a phalanx of riot police. As they symbolically kneeled down on the highway, the police moved in, dispersing protesters with pepper spray. Charlotte has not seen violence and confrontation like this in decades. Later, with protesters already nervous over possible police violence, a civilian suddenly appeared in the crowd, menacingly brandishing a gun on his hip. After he attempted to intimidate protesters, he was chased away. It's a frighteningly familiar reality in today's fractured America. On a street corner, I sat down to talk with a group of young activists. Josh had been arrested just hours earlier. I had my hands up. I had my back turned and I said to police, you like seeing our backs, don't you? So you can shoot me in the back. And um, five or six officers came and grabbed me. You're not being detained, you're being arrested. Why am I being arrested? Crickets, slammed my head back into the ground. You have to tell yeah. me why I'm being, yeah, right here. 
Man, you have to tell me why I'm being arrested. Why you're taking my freedom from me. And they said? They said you're under arrest for incite, and I quote, inciting a mother. Rebecca is a part-time Uber driver. Like so many here, she fears the police on a daily basis. I I'm afraid that I can be driving Uber and I'm pulled over and I could say the wrong thing, I could maybe move the wrong way, and then all of a sudden my life is in danger. My brother, he's 6'6", six, six, he's six, 17 years old, and he's 250 pounds. He, if he's driving in his car and they feel at any reason that he reaches the wrong way or does the wrong thing at any time, he's a 17-year-old kid, who knows? They're going to be screaming, waving guns in his face, and he's not going to know what to do, and his life could end at that moment. These activists joined the protests over police killings in Baltimore, and they're determined that Charlotte will be different. Think completely different. Why? Well, for starters, um, a lot of those movements, as far as actually people physically getting out of their homes and putting their bodies and their lives at risk, um, that happened for one night, maybe two. Um, but here, this is already going into the third. Tonight, protests are due to continue and carry on through the weekend, with curfews being ignored. The release today of the shocking video of Keith Lamont Scott's shooting and tragic final moments seem likely to fuel the angry protests, engulfing yet another American city. Well, joining me here is the author and journalist Gary Young. He spent 12 years working as the US correspondent for The Guardian, and his latest book looks at gun violence in America. And we're joined from Charlotte in North Carolina by the civil rights activist John C. Barnett. Mr. Barnett, what effect do you think this latest video that's just been released will have? Uh, just very disturbing, very disturbing. Um, you know, I, this, they've been holding on to this video for uh, over three days almost, and uh, the community has been asking for it, and, and now that we hear it and see it, it's very disturbing. And it's even more disturbing because I can still hear the, the wife's screams in my ear. You know, don't shoot him, he has a TBI, traumatic brain injury. And so um, it's going to be very um, challenging for Charlotte tonight and I guess the upcoming weeks. And what do you understand was going on? Because there's still confusion. Uh, you know, the police briefings have claimed that he was armed, that he may have been pointing the gun. What is your understanding of what happened? Well, one of the other um, media outlets that I've seen, I've seen a video, and it seems as though there's a, ground, a gun on the ground, and then five minutes later, or a few seconds later, there's no gun. And they show different, two different pictures. And so that's the big mystery. I do, I do know some police work. I, I have friends who's officer. Uh, my brother-in-law, he's white, his father's an officer. Uh, but the truth about it is, I know that there's certain things you can't touch. And I think even in the military, my experience in the military, you can't touch uh, an injured body, somebody that's been shot. And he was shot, he was face down. I understand they may have maybe wanted to administer CPR, but they rolled him over. Bullets travel. So we don't know what the outcome could have been if they had initiated, you know, proper medical treatment to him. Just, um, they're police officers, not paramedics. Just stay where you are for a moment. I want to bring in my studio guest, Gary Young. What, what do you think is going on in, in America? Are these a series of individual tragedies or, you know, pieces of police violence, or are they part of something much bigger that have to do with attitudes towards the black community? Well, they have to be part of something bigger, don't they? If, if uh, you have uh, a quarter of the people this year who've been shot dead by police, are black and black people make up only 12% of the population, then that can't be uh, an accident. And if you think of the history of America, it was a slave state for 200 years, an apartheid state for 100 years, it's only been a non-racial democracy for 50 years, then um, we can see where some of this is, is, uh, is coming from. And what America has proven in the last eight years is that it can elect a black president twice. What it cannot yet prove is that a young black person can walk down the street unassailed by law enforcement. Now, in your latest book, you've, ta you've taken a day in a series That's of victims right. of gun violence and looked at their stories. How many of the sort of the cliches about the black community in America do you feel you have un unpicked or reinforced in doing it? Um, well, what you get when you look at these kids, these 10 kids on a random day, is that they're kids, that they are kids. Now, some of them, the nine-year-old who shot as he answers the door uh, and his mother's ex-partner just shoots him in the head, or the 11-year-old who shot at a sleepover, um, 
those, you, you know, there's nowhere else to put that but a, a, a horrible, horrible accident in a country where guns are freely available. They, those wouldn't be possible anywhere else in the Western world because guns aren't as available elsewhere. But the rest, some of the young uh, men, they're all men uh, uh, or boys, uh, some of them are, um, you know, they've been suspended from school, but young people are suspended from school sometimes. That needn't result in death. Uh, some of them um, uh, have had no trouble with the law at all. But what you hear time and time again from the parents, particularly the parents of the black kids, is that they have to make a case for why their child shouldn't have been shot, that they have to kind of explain, they have to be uh, whiter than white, pretty much. They have to be top of the class, a student, as though if your son got a B or a C, that somehow they were worthy of a bullet. John Barnett, in the, in the political context of America right. right now, we see the Republican Party and Donald Trump saying, look what's happened to race under Barack Obama, a black president. How much do you think what's going on in America with the shooting of black men is to do with the fact that there is a black president right now? Yes, absolutely. Um, Bobby Kennedy said uh, a, a little over 40 years ago, that he believed that the, the, the rate of how uh, blacks in this country is progressing, at that time he used the word Negroes, at the, rate that at the rate that they're progressing, it's possible that we could have a president in 40 years. That came true. Literally, the, the timing was perfect. But the truth of the matter is there's a lot of people in America who did not vote for President Barack Obama, who do not want an Afro-American man sleeping in the bed of Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's bed. And the truth of the matter is they are still holding on to that because reality just hasn't kicked in for them. And whatever the case may be, that reality that has not kicked in is, is founded on hate. And America is dealing with the hate that hate produced. America wasn't nicely asked for this country to be given by Indians. Uh, it wasn't, we, wouldn't, we didn't ask as, as descendants of slaves, my descendants, my, the slaves didn't ask to come over here. We were forced, we were tied down on a boat, butt naked, and we were brought over here. And because of that, it's almost amazing on how a person can come over here on a boat go through the fire of the civil rights movement and end up at the White House. Mr. Barnett, it's, it's literally almost we, impossible. We must leave it there. Happens. I'm sorry to, draw, to yes. cut you off in, in, in full flow, but thank you very much for joining us. Gary Young, thank you very much. That's okay. I've been getting away with it all.